Good evening. Uh, we'll call this uh, regularly scheduled uh, meeting of the Board of Education to order, although we did change the date. Uh, we invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> and Mr. Blanc, it's good to see you and, uh, leading the reins tonight. So, uh, Let's see. We have some recognition. Yeah, this is um, this is exciting stuff. We have some recognitions here, and uh, I call some of the some of the students up here. Uh, first, we have our welcome, Ms. Zaga. Um, so, please go right ahead. We have our Golden Horseshoe winners, which uh, Golden Horseshoe winners of those who don't know, they have uh, masterful knowledge of, of West Virginia. They've gone to the state, and they're some of the most knowledgeable people we have about uh, West Virginia throughout our through our middle school, like eighth graders. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure who all is here. Is uh, Kaylee Branson here? Okay. Kaylee's not here. Angela and Peyton. Okay. Angela uh, Kretz Kretzer and Peyton Lavalley. You want to come on up? I'm going to give you a little quiz here, the first. Okay, you all come up. I'm going to give you a short, short quiz if you want to come up. And, uh, You're for a pop quiz. <laughs> yeah, pop quiz is not good, but. It's um, summer. <laughs> You're right. You guys are very right. cool, but they agree. Tell us yeah. something special, something you know about West Virginia. Um, well, West Virginia is the only union state to become state by a presidential proclamation. All right, I'm not going to ask you to explain that. But that, sounds <laughs> very, very that sounds very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> and Angela, uh, what can you share with us? Um, in West Virginia, it is illegal to sneeze on a train. Oh. <laughs> illegal? Illegal to sneeze on a train. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> remember that. We have trains that are going through the area. Do we have some certificates? Yeah. Do you have to I'll mail that on. What's the fine for Sutter? sneezing on a train? Yeah, what's the fine? <laughs> any other Golden Horseshoe winners? Do we have any other Horseshoe no, winners? Sure. Sure. Oh, Angela? Right here, do I need to stand between the two of you? Uh -huh. I guess. Okay, I think Jenny and I are both going to try to take a picture today. Here, I'll start it first. Congratulations. Tell me, so when when do you, so do you have to go to take a, a test for this? Or is this based on your studies? And what, what grade about the year? Eighth. Oh, we're going into ninth, ninth grade. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's the Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Another recognition that Miss Susie Moreland from uh, Washington High School do a recognition here. A longtime teacher in Jefferson County. Well, <laughs> as long as I've been teaching, I think I remember Miss Susie. But, uh, That's a great intro. But she's, much, she's much younger than me. We've been teaching about the same time, but she's much younger than me. Our kids play together, but uh, that's all right. But, uh, Go right ahead, please. All right. First, it's my pleasure to be here this evening to speak to you guys to introduce a very fine young man. His name is Henry Thomas, and he was a sophomore in my Business Computer Applications 2 class this year. Um, the class usually is comprised mostly of upperclassmen, seniors, and a handful of juniors, but I had just two sophomores this year. And those students worked tirelessly for me all year. They were a, an absolute pleasure to teach. Henry was one of those. Um, the class this year helped pilot the Microsoft IT Academy, and he was just gung-ho about everything we did all year long, from projects to practice tests, etc. And he's here tonight because Henry, um, not to his knowledge, when he took the certification test in the spring, like everyone else in the class, all the scores were going into a contest. Microsoft had decided to pair with the states to develop a Microsoft Office Specialist State Championship for each state. And they would place the top three students from the schools in the state of West Virginia. So we got word in May that Henry, with his 
perfect score in Microsoft Word 2013 was the second place winner. Quite an accomplishment, we're very proud of him. I'm sure in your mind you're thinking, how do you get second place with a perfect score? <laughs> it's a time test, and it's a 50 minute grueling test for national certification, and the tiebreaker is the amount of time before you hit the submit button. So he is just that good, and we're so, so proud of him. Since the seniors left, Henry went on to earn second certification in Microsoft PowerPoint, so it's my pleasure tonight to bring up here Mr. Henry Thomas. <laughs> On behalf of the board, congratulations, Henry. Thank you. Good work. <laughs> you going to quiz him on like a mail merge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we may have some summer work. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Recognition now is uh, we have our fine track athletes. Want to come on up, please? We have uh, Rhonda Bergandi. Is, uh, I'm thinking this is probably Washington High School track. I'm thinking the high jump or no, yeah. the high <laughs> jump. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, congratulations, and for your tidbit, how high was your high jump? 5'10". Um, 5'10". Five ten. Five ten. Wow. Fantastic. You could jump well over me there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fantastic. And uh, you look like our only person in the county that came back with a state championship. So that's really, really an awesome feat that you had there. And your mom's yeah. a teacher in Jefferson County also, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So, uh, really appreciate all you're doing and your mom's doing for the school system. Okay. Mr. Sabbath here. Rhonda, how long have you been uh, in track? Since sixth grade. Since sixth grade? Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. And uh, have you graduated? Cool. And she was the class president, I hear? Yeah. yeah. Where are you going to school? I'm going to Rutgers. One more recognition, and uh, these folks have been through this place before for recognition. I think this is about the eleventh time now. That, uh, <laughs> We have our our Jefferson High School baseball state championship. I see uh, Coach Lowry and going to bring some of uh, some of our championship players. Morning, so this is guys. the eleventh year that uh, Jefferson's won the state championship. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming in. Come on in. Just gather around. Let's see. We should get the whole board to stand. Maybe have them get behind us, Coach. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for bringing some of, the, some of your players in before the summer got away from us. We wanted to, to recognize uh, you for, another, for an outstanding season and for uh, 11th championship. That's pretty amazing. It's our Hall of Fame baseball pretty amazing. coach. Sure. Larry and I, I'd like to add so. with Coach Larry, though, uh, I was trying to get a hold of him to see if they could come for this recognition just to show his commitment. To, he was in Baltimore with one of his players trying to get them on to, a, I guess, a young Baltimore team to play. But the Oriolanders, in fact, that was Brad. Brad, raise your hand. He's, he's Congratulations. That's it. All right. Thank you. out to follow through with his players, not just the Jefferson. Yeah. Well, I, we're going to have to get the board to stand up on the table <laughs> get a picture of these guys. <laughs> we'll save your seat. Why don't you guys go around here? If we push you around, you guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll sit you know. down. There you go. You all come. I don't think they'll have a problem towering over yeah. your seat. <laughs> here, why don't, why don't, we, why don't we just come around? Come, on, come all the way around. All the way around. All the way around. First of all, we appreciate you having us in, and a uh, great group of guys. That's the reason they were successful. Not only were they a great group of baseball players, but they're good people as well. Uh, did the right things, made good decisions on and off the field. Uh, we had 39 kids involved in our program. Uh, 
at the varsity and JV level, and, and 12 of them, which is over a quarter, had 3.5 grade point averages or above. So we're proud of that. So, Outstanding. And uh, if uh, if you don't mind, I just let them introduce themselves. They Please. Can just say yes. words, but. My name is Alex Sennett, and I play second base. I'm a sophomore. Uh, Don Dotson, I play third base, and I'm a rising junior. Uh, my name is Marcus Smith, and I'm a graduating outfield. All right. Hi, uh, Will Oliver. I graduated. I play center field. I'm Charlie Barnwell. I play first. I'm going to be a senior. Chase Crockett, right field. You're going to be a senior. <clears throat> I'm Andy Desco. I'm a pitcher, and I just graduated. I'm Joseph Mills. I'm a catcher, and I'm going to be a senior. Uh, Brad Davis. I'll be a senior, and I'm a pitcher. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Outstanding, outstanding work, and and I know you all, all of us benefit from uh, the opportunity you have to uh, play uh, for uh, such a great coach and leader in the community. So, Andy, yes. why don't you go ahead? Andy had a little something here he'd like to leave. I noticed there's a couple of them out in the hallway there. Maybe that can add to it. We'd like to present you guys with this picture oh, of our uh, state standing. championship team. Fantastic. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to be in the picture, so uh, you, no, I'm you just, just, just <laughs> scoot over a little bit. Mr. Mabel had a grandson who won Blake, won 22 games for us over his career, so he certainly was uh, a major part of our program when he played. I know a couple of boys in middle school who are uh, hoping to play for you as well, so. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. Perfect. We've got a lot of good seniors still coming yeah. back. Yep. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Mr. Blanc, uh, see if you can top that. <laughs> <laughs> Something to be proud of, man. <laughs> I don't think really too much of it. And you know, you see it throughout our community, our the baseball programs in this community at Parks and Rec and uh, different leagues. Uh, it's it's been quite a quite a tradition here. And it's great to see it continue. Thank okay. you. Probably, I think this is the time that I let you know about a, a TBA on the consent agenda. Is that correct? Uh, well, first, do you have any uh, are there any comments? anything that uh, you want to share then we will uh, approve the board minutes we'll do citizens comment and then you okay. can introduce the consent agenda okay well the basic like I say we're real proud of all these all these people that we recognize tonight say it speaks very well of Jefferson County Schools and uh, say we're excited we're gonna have uh, superintendent dr. Bondi Shea Gibson will be uh, taking the reins for us on, on Wednesday so we're real excited about that to uh, get Get the, get the ball rolling here. That uh, just exciting times here at the school board. Yes, it's a busy summer, and uh, and thank you uh, to the student recognition and uh, to Sandy and everyone here that helps put that together. It's a great addition to recognize uh, these uh, students for a variety of accomplishments. Okay. Uh, Approval of uh, minutes of uh, regular board meeting on June 8th and special meeting on June 17th. Do we have a motion? Somewhere. Second. Second. <coughs> Any uh, corrections, revisions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Citizens' comments. Uh, we had one uh, sign up. Uh, Linnea? There you are. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Do you want me to go back? Here? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and just read what I have. And, and to to, uh, just because uh, we've had several uh, policies that have been proposed and also moved. So just just be sure to tell us which one that you're commenting on. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Blanc, members of the board, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight concerning policies 2.8.5 and 2.8.6. These are the um, professional organization policies. 
that were um, proposed and just came down from public comment. I come before you tonight as a member of not only the state's largest educational union, but also the state's largest union in all of the AFL-CIO. As the president of J AFT Jefferson County, I have an obligation to represent our 280 plus members and ha I have some concerns about your proposed policy that will affect the employees in Jefferson County. First, I feel that these two policies are very contradictory. In policy 2.5 states that you see the value of employees being a part of the organizations, but in almost every subsequent line in policy 2.8.6, there are attempts to make accessing union representation or union representatives much more difficult for your employees. <clears throat> first, in policy 2.8.6, the first three bullets are already state law, state code, or being followed by anyone who visits the school in Jefferson County. Bullet four is where we start to have some real concerns. You have placed all the power in the hands of the principal while the employee cannot even determine where they want to meet with their own union rep on their duty free lunch. If an employee is having a disagreement with their administrator and they call their AFT rep, then the person that they could be having their disagreement with gets to decide where the meeting between the rep and the employee will take place. Therefore, it's very possible that the principal could mandate that that meeting take place in his or her presence. Um, employees should have the right to meet privately with their representative during their duty-free lunch. In the past, AFT has come to Jefferson County Schools during staff's duty-free lunch and handed out information and allowed any staff access to a snack or free lunch and to ask questions. With the new policy, the new policy will no longer allow that. It appears that the policy is trying to keep employees away from speaking with employee organizations. In my opinion, this is nothing more than union busting. The policy allows organizations to be there before and after school. Before school, is so difficult because teachers are getting ready to start their day. And after school, many of our teachers work second jobs, they tutor, they have family obligations, so it's very difficult to do that after school. They should be allowed to meet with their rep at a safe time and location. Also, limiting one's opportunity to meet with representation hinders the possibility of resolving complaints before they become grievances. Um, <clears throat> also, I lost my spot. Also, um, in regards to not being able to meet during a planning period, West Virginia State Legislature, well, the legislature overwhelmingly passed a bill that would have given teachers total control over their planning periods. The bill granted the power to the teachers to use their planning period as they see fit for their students. Unfortunately, our governor vetoed this bill because of the pressure put on him by local boards of education, local superintendents, and the West Virginia Board of Education. You as a board are saying that this pol policy, that your employees are not capable enough to make the determination of what is important to their students during their planning time, that only the administration is capable of knowing what is important to their teachers. I truly hope that this is not the message that you're wanting to send to your employees. And the next to last bullet is currently not happening in Jefferson <coughs> County in regard to AFT. Very rarely has AFT been granted a professional day to attend meetings and functions for our union. I have taken my own personal days to do this. Is there some way that we can develop a policy that pertains to union representatives going to um, conventions, lobbying days, legislative days. Um, these functions are of great benefit to employees in the school system as a whole. I urge you not to pass this policy in its current written form and instead allow your employees the right to proper representation. The union does not and should not be viewed as the enemy. We have worked together well in the past and can continue to do so in the future. We are all in this together for what is best for the students of Jefferson County Schools. I ask the board once again to consider my suggestions and make those revisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, this particular uh, policy is uh, not under review tonight. Uh, no. um, and um, so uh, we'll be limited in uh, any comments that yes. we can make tonight. But uh, would you, I mean, the reason it's not being considered tonight is because we did want to have an opportunity for both. Uh, the incoming superintendent to review it and have some input as well as uh, to visit with uh, uh, the representative group. So we make sure that we have a written copy of yes. your remarks. Okay, great. Thanks.
Any other comments sorry, or questions? Mr. Sun, do you want me to send it to the board as well as? Uh, if, if Janet has it, that's sufficient. Okay. She'll make sure that we get it and that the superintendent gets it. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, you bet. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Blanc, consent agenda. Yes, what I wanted to uh, address is item number number 50, the appointment of the C.W. Shipley Elementary Principal. And uh, that recommendation is Ian Hillman. That, uh, Mr. Hillman's with us here. He's a uh, <coughs> county assistant principal at Harpers Ferry Middle School. He's been a teacher at Washington High School and at, uh, at Musselman Middle School. He also was a past uh, principal for our summer school. He's a graduate of Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, and has his uh, master's degree from West Virginia University in, uh, in admin school administration, education administration. And uh, say Mr. Hillman is, is here. Great, great. With Thank us. you. Thank you. So uh, can we get a motion then on the consent agenda? Tim, excuse me, there's one other item to add. Um, Thank you, Janet. Mm -hmm. Number um, 23 is Kate Lady. Mm -hmm. It's on, on this agenda by the way, Tom Beaver just goes to the agenda. It's Kate Lady. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, corrections, addendums uh, to the uh, consent agenda? If not, a motion to consider. Second, great. Uh, one uh, question: um, the on um, 46. Uh, just refresh my memory on credit recovery instructors at what uh, what grade levels that they work. These are high school teachers that are working uh, for uh, for uh, credit. Can we, for usually for credit, either a student is. Uh, has to make up for some reason or other either they didn't complete it or maybe they didn't get a passing grade in it so and so is this like for during the summer this is the summer school teachers that will oversee right gotcha. yeah okay great any other uh, questions <coughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Oh, ayes okay. have it. Mr. Hillman, congratulations. We look forward to working with you. Sir. And I, I should know the answer to this, but maybe you know the answer to this. Now, as a, uh, I'm a Longhorn, and uh, at every home football game at the University of Texas, they always announce the Slippery Rock football score. Always. I don't know why they do that at Texas, but they, they did it at Michigan. And uh, I think Michigan fans thought that was a hilarious name. So so do we. We used to always, <laughs> we used to always get the biggest, the biggest yell from the fans. The, uh, the Slippery Rock football team is actually playing a game, I think, this year at uh, Michigan Stadium. So they have some kind of connection there. Yeah. I don't know why it started, but they announced it and it stuck. So. It, it has, it's definitely stuck. So. That's Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you. I uh, hope you didn't have any summer plans, but <laughs> 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 great. Well, we look forward. Does, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Okay, old business. Okay, so we have the, uh, after um, approval of the intermediate grading policy for Chapter 7, uh, Section 5.2.2, and uh, this is something Miss Tara Mahoney brought to you before. It was uh, basically dictated by how the, uh, how the state records, records grades, where we, we combine the reading language arts and spelling into one course code, and I say that's dictated by our state of West Virginia to read how it goes through the, uh, the WEBA system, West Virginia Education Information System, is how the grades provide it. And then the other part dealt with uh, science and health, where they're no longer reported as one, one grade, it'd be two, two separate grades. And did we get any comments on this? We have a, a few comments there. There were no real, a plethora of them or anything. Uh, you have some comments there, I think, that uh, you were sent with you. There was uh, maybe about four out of 100 people questioned <coughs> 
as far as the health grade, I was wondering, uh, the question came up with, uh, with four grades per, per grading period going toward, toward health, would that be too hard of a, like would one low grade damage a student's uh, chances to have, have a good grade? So uh, what Ms. Mahoney did, she sent that question out to all the, the teachers and principals were affected by that, and uh, there were four people that responded that, you know, that uh, gee, they had concerns about that, and so there was another 96 that didn't see see that being as significant. But most of the other comments were just pretty, uh, you know, just random com comments here. Some of them were like, oh, I think it's good, I like it. I mean, there wasn't, you know, nothing with a lot of consistency for anything else that showed any, any level of concern. Can we get a, uh, that was a sorry, go ahead. Minimum of four grades for health, correct? You're correct. teachers could do more. They can do more, right, they can do more. Another giant step forward for West Virginia. <laughs> well, in that case, I, I guess we need a motion. That's all I have. Uh, I don't have one. No. You want to move it, Mr. Cable? Under protest, I move it. Okay. <laughs> we have a second. Second. All right. More questions. So. I, I think the only question I guess I have or concern I have, um, it's not necessarily about this policy, but it's, I have found myself being at T.A. Lowry, C.W. Shipley, and Driftwood Elementary School with my children. Um, due to redistricting, <laughs> I've had quite an experience in many schools, and it's, um, it's difficult for me that we don't have a, and I don't know if it necessarily needs to be a policy, but some kind of understanding because all the different grades are, are weighted differently um, sometimes a teacher may put more weight on this test or less weight on this assessment or more weight on that and because there's not an overall comprehensive plan if you get one teacher you may do very well in a class you have another teacher they may you know you may not test well but that's where all the, the that's where the percentages are so you are not going to do as well and I think it'd be nice to, at some point, look at some thoughts on how we might bring more consensus mm -hmm. as a general rule throughout. Um, and do you think that that's, I mean, are we talking now broadly across all uh, grade all levels? The or all the elementary? Yeah, to start with the elementary. I mean, yeah. they all do it. The high schools are the same way in each classroom, depending on what English teacher you get each year, what math teacher you get each year. It doesn't really, I mean, it, it happens in everything. It's all different, and they send you the papers home, and you have to sign them, and each teacher decides, and then they send it to the principal. And I'm assuming it's still the same way, because it seems to be the same thing. I think the principals have to sign off on it, and then they come back. And, but, um, you know, just kind of, it'd be nice to have a discussion all around about how the best practice would be to do that um, yeah we're gonna have we have at least one uh, uh, planning session scheduled the end of uh, well, I was about to say the end of this month I guess it's technically the end of next month and hopefully we'll have another one so uh, we'll add this to the list I would think is from all, anything that I've ever heard about, whether it's this policy or any other policy, that is the angst that parents have, mm -hmm. is more the inconsistency mm -hmm. of how things are weighted and how every classroom seems to be a little different, more so than what is necessarily graded. Do you have any comment or observation on that? No, I think it's certainly, it's always a fine line there between doing things so consistently that, you know, to the teacher that says, okay, I'm gonna give you a chance to, uh, to make up to do extra work to make up your you know a poor grade you can do some extra work maybe another teacher says i'm not going to give you that opportunity but don't do that or i think there's you know there's certainly a lot of room to debate what is what is the the best practice do we give the up children an opportunity to do a retest or not or don't do a, a re retake that um so i could say it uh we won't solve it right here's no. a lot there's a lot of different philosophies that need to be discussed and i think yeah. look do we want to just like to at least hear them talk about them and figure out maybe what would be the best practice. And that may change. It may look different in elementary and middle and high. So, so why are we looking at this now? 
this policy? Mm -hmm. This was uh, because of the way that the state has uh, changed with how Weavis provides grades. Now the producers are report card, and uh, so that's when the teachers enter their grades. That's how they have to come out and they're printed out that way. Where before that wasn't the case, but the language arts statistical block was all combined into one one grade, and the health and science was separated into two separate separate grades. And I do like the part that they have added on here that within one week the grades have to be entered. I know that's been another concern from a lot of different parents overall, but now it's actually stated, <clears throat> at least for English language arts and math, that a minimum of one grade per week and that they have a week to get the grades in. That was an unwritten policy in the past, yes. and I think so we did is yeah, brought into policy, and then yeah. sometimes those are things we still count on parents to say, hey, I haven't seen my child's yeah. grade, you know. So but it is nice, I and mean, it's fair to the teacher too. If it's not written, yes, it may be an unwritten policy, but right. you know, you may or may not have ever had it enforced, so you don't do it. But if it's written, then it's just fair to everybody. That's what it says. That's what we have to do. So, one of the suggestions in the comments was to make health an OSU class as opposed to a ABCD class. Is that something that we would consider since it's only four grades? I mean, every kid has a bad day, and if a kid has a bad day on one of four tests, like we were talking about a little bit ago, that their percentage is going to drop. That, that was tied in with that when uh, Ms. Mahoney surveyed the principals and the teachers who were affected by it, and that was part of that, that survey question to her about going to OS and U, and there didn't seem to be a whole lot of support. Once again, just a, a handful of people maybe thought that was a that was a good idea, because uh, we discussed that, is it a good idea or not, and let's see how our, our principals and teachers and felt. And, uh, did everybody respond to that survey? No, they no no they five? no a lot didn't respond to it. No, and they all received it, but a lot didn't respond to it. The question was put out, and uh, we probably only had about probably about twenty five people I wanted to respond it. You know, so there the assumption is the ones that didn't respond didn't feel so strong about it that. <laughs> and of the twenty five that responded, most people were okay with everything. Yes. Yes. Wait, uh, Mr. Mr. Walter, do you have an, have you looked at this? Do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, I've looked at it. I mean, it's I definitely see the concern um, with the four grade. I think there was some discussion before where um, was it going to be uh, on and off nine weeks, or now they decided it's going to be more consistent at four grades per nine weeks. That's something that we'll definitely have to work with our staff to make sure that. Uh, it does policy does say a minimum of four grades? Do we feel as in the structures of our four grades are an adequate measure to get uh, the kid a uh, a grade that we feel is fair to that child or all children? I should say. You know, I think we have to get really serious about what we're talking about, though, because if you're talking about making concrete recommendations or rules about how many how many grades how, how they're graded all of those things that go in policies by definition are, are at least somewhat uh, general and if we try to get too specific in those policies we're going to run and it's going to be a slippery slope and we're going to be running downhill real quick so, you know, I don't have any any objection to looking at it and seeing if, if there's some things in there that need to be adjusted. But I think you need to be really careful with where you go with that. Ms. Mahoney tried to get a lot of it, you know, I mean, she tried to maintain input and involvement from all the, the principals and the teachers, you know, she is... Uh, yeah. I think they're certainly aware of what's been done. But it's it's really easy when you go start sit, setting policies like that. If you start getting too specific, you're telling teachers how to teach. And I don't believe we're set up, I don't believe we need to do that. I think we need to have competent teachers and we have to le let competent teachers teach. So, and, and everybody doesn't teach the same way and everybody doesn't learn the same way. So, that, as I'm saying, that, that's, that can get real dicey, so you have to be really careful where you go and what you do.
Okay. Well, what's the uh, what's the will of the board on this one? We feel like it's uh, at least that it's had. Um, how long has this been out for comment? It's been out uh, since mm -hmm. early May, I think, as we. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Somewhat reluctantly, but have it. <laughs> New business, audit committee. We uh, are required now, this is uh, rather new, to appoint from the state auditor's office to appoint formally an audit committee. And the purpose of an audit committee would be, uh, the primary responsibility would be to procure audit services and then oversee corrective action or concerns that the school system would have. And sort of just a background, um, we do a what we call a central office audit, which encompasses our federal programs and our central office business. And then we also do annually a, what we call a school audit, but is really a compliance audit. Um, and the recommendation would be that Dr. Gibson, myself, and um, the assistant treasurer for the audit committee for this year, and then um, after Doc Dr. Gibson gets on board and um, gets her feet wet, that may or may not grow. We, you know, we'll go from from there. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Questions? Uh, is there a? a, a Is the size of the committee specified? Um, it can be three to five members. I think I included that in your packet. And so you're recommending three? Correct. Starting three. Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Beth, uh, just since we're discussing audits, this reminds me, uh, what, what's the, been the uh, the, we voted, so we had the audit and the firm had some issues. We voted to go with the new. We did. This year, when we, when we, now that the audit committee is in line, we will go out for procurement. And we normally would have gone out for f fiscal year 15, 16, and 17. We will be going out for 14, 14. 15, and 16. Um, the auditors, after it did come to the board, the auditors that um, we rescinded the contract for did complete our school audits, which our principals were very happy about that. So we will be procuring 15, or 14, 15, and 16 for our central office and only 15 and 16 for our school uh, agreed upon procedures. Good. So yeah. we hope to have that either at the next board meeting or the second board meeting in July. Great. Thank you. Uh, item B under new business. Yeah. Excellent. For approval for a trip and transportation request for the uh, Kids Castle summer daycare field trips uh, from June 17th to August 18th. It's a local daycare with the, I think there's about 18 trips that they're looking for approval. They had the recommendation from, uh, from the transportation department came down that uh, all the trips are local other than I see there's one in Manassas one in Sterling and everything else is pretty much in uh, Jefferson County or Berkeley County second second okay questions a question on the form that they filled out under cost it says I can't even read it maybe varies or 
I mean, is this a cost that we're picking up? Or do no, it says, I see this for program trip cross is uh, kids castle on the field trip. Maybe you don't have the field trip on the uh, on the county form. It says kids castle will pay for the trip. We might be looking at different. We typically bill for those services. Okay. And if it says varies, it's because they, I think, have to bid to the bus drivers and their their salary may vary or the number of hours may What the sure. fee would be varies. But they'll they'll the cover the the vary. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Item C. Uh, Dr. Sherry Huff talked about this. This is uh, one of the policies that uh, we're trying to bring within the state, the state within the state line. Um, Usually we don't put those out on review. I'm going to let Dr. Hoff put this on because this is something we ha we have to do per the state recommendation. But right, March uh, 12th, the governor signed House Bill 2550 that changed the dates and the timelines for notification of parents of truancy issues, um, and it went into effect June 12th. And after seeing with the prosecutor, we just kind of let it ride since there was no way we were going to notify parents for one day. But we do need to get it corrected and within guidelines of the state law and get it in our handbook so our parents are aware from day one what the changes are. Okay. Uh, can we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Questions? Uh, Dr. Huff, is it, so, uh, so the uh, some of the primary definitions like of uh, full day attendance and, and, and none of that changes. This is all just, just the number of days for notification for truancy and whether it comes out of the attendance office or it comes out of the building level and some of the mandates for the principals and what they have to do prior to any truancy charge being filed against a parent. And uh, I mean, does it substantially change what they have to do now? Principles or? It mandates what we had asked them to do prior. Okay. So you th believe that our folks are at least well trained in what the process should be? We will continue to work on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm quite diligent. Good answer. Good answer. Quite what diligent about training. How many people do you get in a year of time just off the top of your head? From the schools? Well, all of them, all together. That would get, fit under the, this, these definitions. Um, it's generally reversed in that they come from my office to the school. You're welcome to come to our training on August 10th and 11th. <laughs> it's a half-day training. And and who uh, and is that primarily for principals? This year, because of the change in the statute, it's going to be primarily the administrator who's overseeing the attendance or the administrator's designee. In the past, we've worked very closely with the uh, clerical as well as the administrator. And we've gotten a real good handle on getting the clerical side caught up. A small component will continue to reinforce that and work with uh, the new clerical. The problem is going to be working with the administrators, and I know their time is busy. So this year we limited it to four half-day sessions for them to come in hopes of not taking them out of their building too much that week before school starts. So they'll just attend one of those they just have to attend one of those four-hour sessions. Now, in the 5.3.2b, when it says, in the case of three and these absences during the school year, the attendance director or assistant shall serve, shall serve uh, written notice. But are you saying the principals? I have to send a three-day. I have to send a five-day. <laughs> under 18.85, under principal's duty, the principal is required to send a letter at five unexcused. In the past, many of our principals have sent three, five, 10, and 15 days. They've really gone overboard to try and keep parents informed. Parents still get their daily calls when the children are absent. But now it takes it off the principal for doing the additional letters, but it mandates that the principal or designee 
has to have a meeting with the parent and the child. And interventions have to be put in place and it has to be documented. And I think that's going to be the hardest part for some of our schools. Makes sense though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. And Mr. Dingus, uh, you must have D. I do. Uh, action on approval of seeking bids for milk products for the 2015-16 year. Um, also extended on that, if, if you look at your board agenda item, we will be bidding with uh, Berkeley County because we're going to get a whole lot better price. Those prices we found in the past, they got a better deal than we did because they're so much bigger. And we can get a better deal if we bid with them. Um, also, when we did that, we had a couple years ago, I guess it's been two or three, the milk company actually went on strike. And we had to, um, and we had to bring milk ourselves. We actually sent a truck to um, Frederick every day, and they would bring back uh, the amount of milk we needed in areas. And we'd try to do three or two or three days worth in each one of those schools. It was a nightmare, and there's just no other way to put it. But the the company did not stop delivering to Ber Berkeley County because they were too large. So if we bid with Berkeley County in that situation, we're even bigger. So it gives us just a little bit more coverage and tries to make us just a little bit better. Do we have a motion? So moved. Any questions? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, and do we anticipate an executive session yes. to uh, for to discuss uh, litigation? Yes. Okay. Uh, do we anticipate any action? Yes. No, okay. Uh, we have uh, Tracy Everling with us, uh, outside counsel from Steptoe and Johnson. Thank you for being here. Um, so, um, any uh, uh, any comments before we uh, entertain a motion for executive session? Mr. Gable, anything? Ms. Skinner? Ms. Ogden? Okay. Um, and we'll uh, entertain a motion for uh, executive session regarding uh, uh, pending litigation. If there's anything. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. And we don't expect any action when we return to public session. Thank you all for being here.